In this video, we're going to go over Lab 8 class data analysis. So I have my class data here on my right. I have the uh, worksheet on the left. Looking over, there might be a few new things like, oh, there's this root mean square error, mean absolute error. Uh, most of this other stuff is pretty similar to stuff we've done before. Um, but yeah, those two are new and they actually get brought up in the uh, calculations for at least number 10 here on the sheet. So uh, our first thing is going to be we're going to do some mean standard deviations. Uh, well actually before that I'm going to move some stuff on over just because it's going to make things a little bit cleaner later. So I'm going to move the leg length on over. Well I'm not moving it entirely I'm just copying and pasting it. Okay, paste it there got our velocity, paste it there, angle, paste it there, and jump distance. So I did that mainly because a lot of our scatter, pl scatter plots that we're doing, they require everything to be on a y-axis uh, with the jump distance and x-axis on the uh, other variables. And how it's set up right now, it would default everything to the jump distance on the uh, x-axis. And so it just makes things a little bit easier on the back end. Um, so we'll just do, do, do stuff like this. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and do our means standard deviations. I always do that. Average. and stdev.s K for cleanliness gonna go down to two cool and we got everything as it shown here so we can just go ahead copy and paste overwrite cells and we can get these looking a little bit prettier. Coming back here and all borders. Not too shabby. Okay, so now we need to do our scatter plots. All right, so scatter plots. Get rid of those things just in case they cause issues. All right. jump distance by K oh okay looks like I do need to reverse these alright there we go That's okay. That's okay. We're, we're fine. So let's go ahead and I'm going to adjust these because these just are very much off in space right now. 1.2 we'll go with. Okay. Just because that was like, you know, a good, C, uh, good floor for the, for the minimum. And we'll now click on the X. And let's go with about 1.5 just to start. And yeah, we can go to 1.7. All right, so might be a line kind of like right here through the data, something like that. There's a couple points above and below. Uh, but this doesn't look too bad. It's sparse just because we only have 15 uh, subjects, at least from my data. Okay, so that's jump distance and our y velocity. And all right, now we got to do the same thing again for the angle, the angle of takeoff, K. All right, and I'm gonna have to do the same thing I, I just did again, that's okay. Whoops, click on the data points themselves and we can drag these on around and we're good. Okay, I can see these are angles, and that is clearly the jump distance. Let's do the same thing. 
This will this has the same bounds, so we'll go to 1.2 again. Oh, I should have left that open, that's okay. And here we'll go to about what 35 or so. Okay, yeah, that looks looks fine. And we could push it to 37. Eh. Doesn't look like there's too much here. <clears throat> Sorry. Doesn't look like there's too much here. Uh, data is kind of spread out all around, so this one might not be that great of a variable, just kind of looking at it off the graph. But uh, we'll stick with it because that's what we said we're going to do. It's what we said we're going to do, we got to do it um, in this case and show why it may not be good later on the back end. Okay, same thing, only now we're using leg length. Leg length, jump distance. Okay, and we'll have to change these around, ah uh, man, dang it, okay, there we go, have to do that same thing again, 1.2 for my data at least. And this one looks fine on the X. I don't have to do anything with the X axis. It looks good. Uh, so, looks like there might be a, a little something. There's some dispersion around down here and up here throughout the data, but it doesn't look too bad. This one looks decent, leg length does, as does um, our Y velocity. Y velocity, eh little dispersion as well, but it, it comes up in data. That's fine. All right, so these are our three. We got our memes and standard deviations. Uh, we got our scatter plots. I just need to, we have to go through and title these uh, a little bit more appropriately. Okay, so you can go ahead and do your hypothesis now. And lastly, we're going to be doing a regression. This one's worth a few more points. There's a lot more written here than uh, what... Uh, uh, we've done so far, at least from what I recall. So we're going to perform a regression. This is going to be multiple regression. It's just called regression in Excel, but it's on the jump distance as the Y input, and on the X we're going to use our velocity Y, our takeoff theta, takeoff angle, and leg length as the X inputs. And we're going to report the F statistic, significance F, standard error, and there's going to be a few of them, so I'm pointing you specifically to one of them. The root mean square error and mean absolute error. Okay, so we'll do that real quick. Data. Come on, there we go. Okay, regression. We have our Y input range. And our X input range. And this is why we needed to move these is because if we try to specify different columns that are not all right next to one another it won't work it'll throw you an error we have labels so check mark that I'm gonna call this our regression and I'm also gonna tick the residuals we're gonna need those residuals if you saw up here residuals are calculated for you that's where we're, why we're checking this right now we'll need it OK, so we'll go ahead and hit OK. Gets us a new one. We got our residuals, regression statistics, ANOVA, and our coefficients. The coefficient stuff, we're not really interested in. A lot of people would be, uh, but we're not really interested in that. They'll be like, oh, OK, you know, like, all right, this, this intercept, OK, that's good. Oh, Y velocity, uh, we can't reject the, the, the null hypothesis on, each, on, on any of these. And so they'll say, oh, these, these aren't good, don't use them. And it's like, no, no, hold your horses. The p-value of these has nothing to do with how well it will, how good it will make a model. Uh, that's one of the problems some people typically will run into when they do this. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, people do what they do. All right, so taking a look at this stuff. We're going to be looking at regression statistics, 
we have our standard air, which is right there. Standard air for this is how far our points, and I'm just adding that there because that's what the units would be for our Y meters, uh, is uh, just how far the data points will be from our uh, regression line, how far they will be. Uh, it's usually denoted with, I think it's a sigma, or it's like standard deviation of the, of the uh, regression, standard, standard error of the, of the regression. Uh, okay, then these you might be familiar with, multiple r, which would be like our correlation, something like that, our r squared, just the r squared, and then our adjusted r squared, which a lot of people will tend to look at and be like, okay, well, this isn't that good right here. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, don't use r squared. Just, oh, well, don't even use r at all. Don't, like, unless you're using a correlation, just don't, don't use it at all. I I have uh, have a lot of things to say about it. I'm not going to say it here, but there is websites and whatnot that can show you why it's not very good and why you shouldn't use it. Uh, it's taught I know in in introductory statistics and whatnot. Statisticians do know that there is there are issues with it, uh, but yeah, I I recommend you go ahead and uh, if you want to. You don't have to, but if you want to, you can take a look at this stuff yourself. There's lots of people that have looked it up and shown why it's not useful in any context. Uh, and doesn't say what it, it doesn't measure what it actually says it measures, goodness of fit usually. Uh, so yeah, we're not using it because it is useless. Alright, so significance F, this is the one we're going to be using. This is our p-value here, the p-value of of the model itself of the hypothesis that we had. There is a linear relationship between jump distance and our independent variables. That's, that's it right here. This is our p-value. So it is mine is less than 0 0.05 so we can reject that. Cool. At least I can. I don't know if you can. We got our f statistic right here. We got our standard error and uh, what? We need the root mean square error and the mean absolute error. Where, where is that? Mr. Slattery, where is that? Okay. We're going to actually have to calculate it, and that's not going to take that, that much. I left up here the calculations for them. Okay, so root mean square error. This is, both these retain the units of our um, independent variable. So mean absolute error, again, in meters. All right, so root mean square, we got our residuals right here. Awesome. So we're going to do equals to square root. And then we're going to do average. We're going to highlight our region. And then we're going to put, before we close any parenthesis, do the square. It's going to square each of those and then take the average. The average meaning it's going to sum and then divide by the number. So that's the average right there. That whenever you see sum and then divide by n, that's the average. And then we're going to take the square root of that. Cool. So 0 0.13 meters. Okay. And then equals to. Now we're going to do mean absolute error. So mean. Oh, not mean. Again, I always I always do that. And then absolute abs. We'll highlight those residuals, close parentheses. Cool, this number looks like it makes sense. So, mean absolute error, root mean square error. Uh, these will tell you a couple things. Well, each tells you something slightly different. They're both error measurements in terms of how far your data lie from the predicted. Uh, so the mean absolute tells you, mean absolute error, which we've done before, but this tells you about how far, on average, your, uh, your data points are from the model. And so how far do you expect your model to be off when used? Uh, and this is based on the data that was used to what's called fit the model and what's called 
uh, what's also called in sample. So we use the, our data, at least I use my data and you use your data, to fit your model and you use your data to calculate the residuals, to make predictions, and so that makes this an in sample, mean absolute error, and root mean square error. Uh, in sample just again means you're using your data again uh, to check your model to see how well or how far off the data is from the model. Usually, almost all the time, mind you, the mean absolute error, root mean square error in sample is, you know, pretty low. It's not that bad. It's when you try to look at it outside when you try to use data that was not used to fit the model say we're gonna say publish this this uh, model and say hey y'all go ahead and use it here's what to expect when we used our in sample method uh, if they were to then check their their numbers based off of um, our model they would be do computing what's say out of sample mean absolute error root mean square error and usually that's a, a little bit higher, if not more. Uh, depends on model. Depends on the model, how how closely the data sampling and all that was uh, regulated. And by by that I mean how good did someone actually perform the same sort of setup in terms of actually collecting the data appropriately. Uh, so there is some nuance there, but uh, still. We want to have a low mean absolute error. We want a low mean uh, root mean square error. And so this tells us we're expecting about uh, almost 10 centimeters. We're just like 9.7 centimeters, 9.8 centimeters off on average. So that's, that's somewhat substantial when we're talking numbers around what were our means. For this, uh, at least for mine, it was 1.64. Uh, so, yeah, so the real number could be, you know, plus or minus 1.7 uh, to 1.54, 1.74 to 1.54. So it's like, okay, it's, you know, somewhat, you know, we're, we're off a little bit. Again, it's a statistical model. It's fit using just 15 observations uh, and so on. Root mean square error checks a similar thing to mean absolute error, uh, but root mean square error is more sensitive to outliers. So if you didn't have any outliers, mean absolute error and root mean square error would be the exact same thing. But if you had large deviations, like we saw in our plots before, at least I did, there were some larger deviations in here, these would be amplified a little bit. Now I don't have that many out outliers, so it's not that much larger. But it's at 13.7 versus 9.7 centimeters uh, for both of those, or meters if we wanted to talk about. It's usually easier to think about centimeters, though, so I'm using that. So, again, these are in sample, and uh, so these are not that bad, but it does say on average my model is off by about 9.8 or 9.7 centimeters from what the the uh, data actually would be what the measurement actually would be and, and it doesn't seem it does not appear to be like there is uh, a lot of outliers here based on this so that's uh, a lot of things to absorb, but again, root mean square, we're going to be getting these. I'll just bold them here for you. Bold. Bold. Make sure you do get these things you know, into here. These are the ones we care about, the bold ones. The other ones, we don't care about. Um, so at this point, we could evaluate this model and say, okay, you know, is it good or not? Um, Adding additional variables or reducing the number of variables, we do have three three variables, and we could say, oh, angle based on like, you know, our uh, 
our chart here, and it's probably not too good, and so we could get rid of it or anything like that um, and try again. Uh, in fact, at this point, we are just going to be sort of exploring for those that are curious. Uh, if you do have any questions, you know, feel free to contact your lab instructor. Uh, and, and if you don't have any, I'll see you in the next video. But for those of you who want to stick around, I'm just going to go ahead and we'll just eliminate that angle variable. We're just going to explore right now. Mind you, we're just going to explore just a little bit. I'm going to move this out so it's not... Uh, Actually, I should have moved the whole thing, just so I can get all the x variables in there. And we'll rerun this. Call it regression 2, just to, so I don't mix them up. And I'll actually exploratory. Yeah, we'll call it that, so it's not to be mixed up with the regression. Okay, now I'll need to change my range here. Okay, and we can keep everything else. Cool. All right, so technically I'm not rejecting the null hypothesis now. I would still do all this other stuff, though. All right, my standard error, 1.76 versus 1. Uh, 0.16, sorry, 0. 0.16 versus 0. 0.176. So standard error went up 1.6 centimeters. You know, not that much in the grand scheme of things. Let's see what happened to my um, my residuals um, uh, to my root mean square and mean error. Me, uh, sorry, mean absolute error. Let's just copy and paste those. All right, so they went up just a little bit. Now we're from 0 0.97, 0 0.097 to 0 0.117. Okay, a little bit up, and then root mean square, 0.157 versus 0.137, yes. So, just a little bit off. Um, didn't, didn't seem to really affect the model too much um, in the grand scheme of things. It, still, we, we could explore, see how much it actually improves the model. Uh, again, there is going to be a floor to how well we can actually predict. And again, this is in sample, not out of sample. We would want this to be evaluated out, out of sample, though, and people to publish those findings to see how useful is this model. That is the ultimate goal. How useful is this model? This may not even be a very useful model because you have to have a force plate and collect data for it. But it is a very good tool to explore. It is a good thing to explore all of these things and see how, how they work. Um, beyond that, you're going to be exploring uh, some deterministic modeling further in here. Uh, for those of you that have stuck around, if you do have any questions, please contact your lab instructor. And if not, I'll see you in the next video.